I'm going to give a uh, opportunity for a few more people to join before we kick things off this afternoon or early evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, wait for okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, I am Michael Higgs here at Conscious Capitalism, uh, virtual programs manager. And uh, as always, on behalf of the entire team, we appreciate you taking time to grow and learn in community with us today. Um, today, we're excited to be sharing uh, space with Mirren Oka and Masami Sato. Um, as many of you may know who are joining or have uh, part, been part of our senior leader network, uh, Mirren is a longtime member, so I'm very excited to give an opportunity to showcase her in a uh, virtual conversation today. A little bit about our movement. Um, as many of you know, Conscious Capitalism is a global community of CEOs, presidents, founders, board members, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from diverse industries, backgrounds, and perspectives who are committed to the shared purpose of elevating humanity through business. Our organization was founded in 2008 as a 501c3, and it is a uh, community of active operating leaders um, who uh, we created a platform for to share practical advice, tools on how our principles are integrated into different organizations and within various industries. Uh, our community of conscious capitalists offer best practices and business strategies on how the philosophy is applied to create sustainable success within one's business, leading to systemic change and impact in the world. I'm gonna emphasize that impact in the world because that's, uh, that's what we'll be hearing a lot about today. Uh, several times a month, we offer our virtual gatherings uh, as a way for community to see how our philosophy takes shape in the leadership journeys and business practices of those in our network. Just a couple of housekeeping details. Today's gathering is going to run for about 45 minutes. Uh, Masami is going to begin with a presentation that's going to run for about 20 minutes or so, and then we're going to transition to a conversation between uh, Masami and Mirren. Um, we will have a portion of time dedicated to Q&A. So as you're uh, experiencing the presentation or during the conversation between two of our guests, uh, feel free to drop some questions into the, uh, into the Q&A. Um, what else can I share with you? Uh, let me just go ahead and do a little intro on today's session. Um, as conscious leaders, uh, you know, sometimes we may ask ourselves, why isn't every part of the, why isn't every company part of a, a conscious capitalism, right? It's a natural question. And there's a lot of acronyms kicking around, you know, there's CSR, there's ESG. Um, and, you know, just in the swirl of different, I would say ways to identify or orient your business, um, you know, that can be lead to overwhelm. And, um, uh Sorry, let me let me back up. I, I just want to tell the audience. <laughs> Sorry to make this public. I'm I'm uh, I have one of those very bad colds that's circulating around. So um, uh, forgive me for being a little off my game today. Um, I'm going to take that second. I'm going to take that paragraph over again. Excuse me. Um, so we have acronyms such as CSR and ESG. Um, uh, excuse me. From acronyms from CS CSR and ESG to the day-to-day -day overwhelm of leading a business. Um, it often unleashes the someday response. Um, and you know maybe that leads to delayed decisions. Um, and that may be one of the reasons that businesses avert their conscious journeys um, because it can be so confusing. Uh, and today's seminar, we're gonna focus on uh, what if it wasn't that complex? What if it was not about the power of big initiatives or policies? but instead about the huge power of small everyday actions. What if we could ensure that every action, big or small, in every business made a positive difference in the world? And that's precisely the question that uh, Masami Soto uh, created with her Global Giving Initiative and Social Enterprise B1G1, uh, Buy One, Get One. Um, it's helped businesses around the world generate more than 337 million giving impacts globally. Uh, again, in today's conversation, uh, Masami Sato, the CEO and founder of B1G1, and Mirren Oka, 
conscious capitalism community member and CEO of the Beat Corp certified uh, aquatics swim program is going to share how journeys led them to use business to ele elevate humanity and how B1G1 works and how your business and your customers' everyday actions can create truly sustainable impact through social contributions, drawing inspiration from nature. Uh, Masami, uh, I just wanted to welcome you uh, to today's webinar. And again, I apologize to the audience. Um, as I disclosed, I'm I'm in the midst of a, a, a cold right now. Um, but Masami, welcome. I wanted to welcome uh, you to to uh, uh, address our our conscious capitalism community. Thank you so much for being here today. And I know you're joining us. Uh, I believe it's very late in the day for you. Diana, oh no, no, it's you. very early actually, oh, six a.m. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, welcome. Um, I will uh, I'll turn my screen off. And uh, again, a, a warm welcome to you. And uh, thanks Thank for being you. here with us today. Thank you, Michael. Um, I just want to take a moment before I begin to thank Michael for being here. Um, last year, we had a great conversation um, and, uh, you know, talking about how to make this session um, meaningful. And uh, I just so enjoyed your um, input and uh, guidance around it. So um, even though you are not in the best condition today, but I really appreciate um, your effort. And uh, yeah, great to have you here. So thank you everybody for being here. Um, my name is Masami. Um, I'm the founder of um, B1G1. And uh, today we are talking about this topic about making a real impact, um, but also sustainably. And, you know, again, Michael said that it's a big topic and often we think it's really like hard to get started. We don't know where to begin. So we are going to talk about the idea of power small because small things are powerful because we can get started right away, you know, compared to big overwhelming things. So as we look at the concept of power small, I think um, no matter where we are from and what background we are kind of like from, uh, we are all very small, right? Um, when we look around the world, then the world is this magnificent, beautiful place. You know, but then at an individual level, we feel small. And as business people, you know, business people like you uh, perhaps have so many important priorities and you get to see so many things that's happening in the world. So, um, of course, it can be overwhelming, but it is an amazing world out there. So we are all this tiny little dot. Um, in terms of tiny little dots, right? Um, I think today what we are going to do is to really change our perspective because we could feel small and be overwhelmed and do nothing. Or we could have a new pair of eyes to understand the opportunities that we are surrounded by and knowing what small actions we could be taking to create real sustainable change together. So now, zooming into that, um, I want to introduce uh, little me. <laughs> so that's a photo of me and my sister, older sister, sitting in front of my grandparents' shop in Japan. Um, I grew up helping my grandparents' business because in my own um, family with my parents, my parents are always very busy and I was a very introverted, quiet child. So um, I didn't know how to express myself. I was always timid. But throughout all my um, childhood, I had the opportunity to uh, spend my entire time uh, Every school holiday to stay with my grandparents who run their own small family business. So in that family business, I learned so much and um, I uh, became very curious. <laughs> so I was very timid and quiet and I didn't know how to really talk to strangers, but I could serve customers and I could do things in business. So one day when I graduated from school in Japan, I decided to travel. So I spend, actually ended up spending, because I didn't plan to do so, but um, I ended up spending a few years backpacking around the, um, the, around the world. And in the beginning, I couldn't even speak English. You know, um, I couldn't, like I was uh, not extroverted and I didn't know how to speak with strangers, but I was not able to even speak because <laughs> I didn't know how to speak English. So... In that time of total vulnerability and expressing the world um, 
just totally openly <laughs> without judging anything, then I started to realize something extremely special that actually we are very similar. You know, even though we spoke different languages, looked different, had a different culture, religions, but everywhere I went, I always connected with people um, who reached out to me to help when I needed the help. So I started to be open to communicate as well with simple words because I couldn't, I didn't have words to say the right things, right? <laughs> so I just had to be simple, open, connecting, curious, and do things together with people. And so that's the time I learned so much about how connected we are, how similar we are, how everybody just wanted to do the same thing, which was for them to have a good life, a happy life. They wanted their loved one to feel happy and fulfilled. So, um, but then in that time, I started to also see very different pictures in the world. And so in my own country, I came um, from like lower middle class family. My parents were actually quite poor. Um, so I didn't, we didn't have a lot, but I never had to really suffer in starvation or not to have a, even a shelter. So. When I was traveling and really seeing that, uh, you know, children uh, without going to school and working or people with physical disability not having any help, you know, I really felt that it just didn't make sense. But the thing is, when we look around and see some big numbers like this, we could all be power, feel powerless, you know, um, and this, then I thought, like, how come this world is not really making sense? <laughs> so today we are going to change our perspective and flip this perception. Um, I'm gonna show you different uh, numbers now. Uh, this is a set of numbers. Um, on the white side, on the left, you see the numbers of um, in relation to global priorities, which means the things that we need to achieve or address. So first of all, um, $40 billion is the estimate amount of additional funding that go, need to go into children's education so that the, every child have access to primary school education, at least the primary basic education. Secondly, $114 billion is the estimated amount of uh, additional funding each year that need to go into um, uh, water and sanitation to ensure basic access to, to clean water for everyone. And then the third one, $70 billion, is the amount of annual funding required to go to um, uh, food and nutrition for children. So the mal malnourished children right now in um, some parts of the world can get access to nutrition. So these are still big numbers, but now I'm going to show you different numbers on the right side. So this is, um, these numbers relate to the size of global industries. First one, $84 billion is the size of education industry in the world. $1.2 trillion size of pharmaceutical industry. $8.7 trillion is the size of food industry. So, um, and there are lots of businesses out there, right? Like this is, um, these are just uh, a few examples of the activities that's driving our world. You know, businesses that are doing every day people who are working to make these things happen. And so if we think about all of the things surrounding us and all the businesses that are doing what they do every day without even us thinking about it, then some of the greatest challenges that we see in the world, and it's just the basic important things that we need to ensure to deliver to everyone. Because today we might say, we need to talk about the sustainability in terms of environment, right? Um, but the thing is, unless we, we can ensure that every person in the world ha at least have access to basic resources and access to education, we cannot change this picture. We cannot change the consciousness around environmental protection. Um, people will still cut down trees. So what we need to achieve together is this like all sort of interconnected activities and actions. And when we link the opportunities to make a difference with 
our ability to make that impact and make that happen together all the time, then we really can change and create great things. So anyway, in terms of a connection, um, I want to talk a little bit about my personal story of what happened and I became a business owner because this is Myra, my baby daughter. And um, she was born 23 years ago. And when she was born, it changed my life because until then, I never wanted to have a family because I didn't know how to connect with people. And <laughs> I didn't know I wanted to become a mom, but I accidentally became a mom. And when I had her, that was the first time ever I realized that I could not say I was too small, so I wouldn't do anything about the problem that I saw. Because I started to see the faces of children I met, you know, the street kids when I was backpacking and traveling. And I thought, what if everybody in the world said the same thing? You know, we can't solve all the problems, so we do nothing. So I decided to do something <laughs> about it and became a business owner and didn't have money. So I started this like tiny fast food takeaway food place. I uh, uh, bought it at a loss, you know, making loss and build a business. My daughter being on my back all the time. And that um, business eventually evolved into, so I had two businesses in New Zealand, sold those businesses, moved to Australia. Then I started a food production company, which sold um, frozen, packaged, um, uh, organic, gluten-free meals. <laughs> and that was like a long time ago. So uh, yes, like 20 years ago. So probably it was a bit too early at that time. However, we worked really hard to make the business um, create uh, profit, resources, because um, we committed that all the profit we created from this business, we wanted to give for the children the education and food. <laughs> but honestly, it was very hard because we had so many things to do. I didn't have a time. Um, we didn't make much profit because we were putting all the money back into business. The aspiration of doing something great seemed like it was moving further ahead of me. So one day I paused and I thought, what if? You know, what if instead of trying to do something big in the future, we did something small, but did it every, every day. So that led to the idea of buy one, give one at that time. No, <laughs> buy one, give one. But today it's, B, it's called b one g one because it's more than that. So imagine if every time you enjoyed a cup of coffee, somebody received access to water. Imagine every time you had a piece of favorite clothes, you know, you purchased uh, that gave access to education to a girl. Or imagine if an accounting firm, every time they serve the client, they get to give income generating opportunity to family in need. So that's b one g one today. Um, when you go to b one g one you get invited to consider to become a business for good. And you don't need to... Um, be, be thinking about this in terms of ESG and CSR, but it's about the opportunity of creating a measurable and trackable impact. And so um, when you go into the B1G1 account, then what you get to see is really the list of opportunities that you get to um, take part in uh, from planting trees, one tree, to giving access to water, to providing education. Um, so just as an example, um, give it, providing access to uh, you know, life-saving water to one person for a day uh, can cost uh, as little as just a few cents. And if you think about all the business actions that you are taking and thinking about making those small positive impact happen in the world, it's actually not impossible to do. Today, we have um, thousands of businesses working with us and over the years they have created uh, more than 340 million giving impacts so this is kind of like a recent milestone 340 million um, so I'm going to be introducing Miren in a minute, but um, the best way to introduce Miren to you, well, first of all, she is a swim school person and um, she is all about building amazing team. And there is this video, which kind of like captures the essence of B1G1 and the people and companies in B1G1 and Miren is a part of it. So I would love you to watch this video with me before we go to Miren. A 
At Slumberzak here in Germany, for every baby sleeping bag we sell to our customers around the world, we give to support the health and education of children in need. Hi everybody, we're Ellis Knight International Recruitment in the UK and for every placement and interview that we conduct, we give access to life-saving resources to people in need around the world. Here at Green Super Camp Australia, we're really aware of the impact our young leaders will make in the future. And that's why we involve all the young people who come to camp in selecting B1, G1 projects that they want to make a difference in the world. At Beyond Impact, we make a difference with B1, G1 in every event, every coaching call we facilitate and every speech that we give. And one of our B1, G1 goals is to rescue 1,000 kids from sex trafficking. Hello from Oak Aquatic Swim School, Miami, Florida in the USA. We teach families to be safer around the water and for every swimming lesson we teach, we give impacts to B1G1 and we're so grateful to have B1G1 in our lives. So thank you for watching that video. Um, so today, uh, as I speak at this event, I also wanted to make sure that we celebrate the opportunity to connect by creating some impact together. And I will be funding this impact. So uh, basically all you need to do is to choose which impact you want to create um, for you being here today. What you can do is to scan this QR code if you have a um, phone. If uh, not, then I will put um, a link for you so you can uh, click on the link too. So let me just go to the chat and uh, put the link there. Hold on. Um, oh, I wonder if you can see the, the link. Michael, that, can you see the link on the chat? <laughs> Uh, anyway, yes, the, yeah. yes, the link is, <clears throat> excuse me, is in the chat. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you can click on the link and then uh, let us know which impact you want to create today, um, or you can scan it uh, on your phone and then um, uh, make an impact together with us as well. So this is really about creating the ecosystem um, coming together and. Uh, um, just to, so you understand a, li a little bit. Um, so when I realized the, the kind of like a power of doing things, um, small things every day, um, at that time, which was uh, actually over 16 years ago, um, I decided to sell the company um, in Australia, which we were uh, running, which was the food company, and moved to Singapore to build B1G1 as a global initiative, helping businesses make a difference together. So I just wanted to kind of like weave the link for you. And so B1G1 in the last 16 years, working with so many amazing businesses, including Mirant, um, have made more than 330 million giving impacts. And we are looking forward to doing so much more. Now, I believe that the conscious capitalism is very much that. It's not about just one action, one thing. It's not just about giving. It's not just about um, CSR. <laughs> it's really about linking your purpose and guiding and bringing everybody on the journey together to create the greater culture. And we have to be doing this together as global leaders today. Miran is a great symbol of you know, that dedication as a leader who takes everybody on board in that journey. And you know, as a champion, she is, of course, a great um, member of Conscious Capitalism community. Uh, she is a member of 1% for the Planet Initiative. Her company is a certified B Corporation and part of B1G1 Business for Good. So Miran, um, I would like to introduce you and um, you can share uh, about your business. Oh, you are muted, Miran. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I was surprised to see that video. I haven't seen it in a little while. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. So, um, and I'm I'm humbled and I'm really grateful for uh, your words. Uh, we really feel honored to be a part of B1G1 um, for a long time now, since 2016. So. 
Um, just quickly, I'll kind of go over our story and how we came about finding B1G1. Um, I was at a conference here in Miami, just a little business event, and they spoke, Masami and Paul spoke at an event. Um, and it was, it was really, it was a lunchtime business networking thing, and I went to it, and I heard about B1G1, and I thought it was really, really interesting. I was intrigued. And um, I started to ask a lot of questions. Um, in fact, they probably remember that I asked a lot of questions. And I had a healthy skepticism of organizations and nonprofits, um, you know, especially with administrative fees and with how, you know, giving money where it really went and did it go to the projects on the ground. But I was really um, intrigued about how transparent the organization was, you know. And so that was a huge part of why we chose to partner with B1G1. And um, a year later, they actually, it was really fortunate, there was a conference in Miami, the B1G1 conference was in Miami. And so we attended that conference, I brought some team members, and we were able to really um, get to know the organization better. And you know, the interesting thing is, is that's where I learned about B Corp certification, because one of the members of the audience had just become B Corp certified, and B1G1 was in the process of becoming B, uh, B Corp certified. So it was it was perfect timing because it, you know, they told us about, about their B Corp certification journey. And that's kind of when we started thinking about, oh, this is interesting. So again, it was one of those really great times where we learned something else. Um, they really helped us get on that journey. Um, so, you know, right now we teach swimming lessons at Oak Aquatic Swim School. We teach life-saving skills. You know, we do this really great work every day, but we want it, to, we want our business to be about more. We want to provide life-saving skills to the community, but we also want our business to be a force for good. And we want to, um, to do great for the community and for the planet and for people. So, you know, our purpose actually is to make a positive difference in our team members, our families, our community, and on the planet. And a part of our mission, you know, yes, part of our mission is to teach families to be safer around the water. Um, but also another part of our mission is to, is to develop our people and to grow our team members under this umbrella of social and environmental responsibility so that we can grow our business and be, you know, have this sustainable business and grow the business. And so when we partner with B1G1, it was really a great opportunity because our team members were able to learn about environmental and social responsibility. And then they were also able to um, make some impacts. So I think it's been a really perfect way for, it, especially in 2016, it was a really perfect way for us to start um, a very systemized giving program. Before that, we did, you know, some just kind of a random giving. We uh, volunteered for different organizations, but this kind of set up a really nice structure um, and it allowed our people to be part of the choices that we made. So when we first started, we donated, it's buy one, give one. So for every swimming lesson that we taught, we donated access to one day of water to a community. Um, and so, and, and as Masami showed earlier, it, it's as little as two cents. You know, so for every swimming lesson, we were donating two cents, which really it, it's that anybody can do that. You know, we felt we could do that. So, you know, we have since grown and we're now we're we're teaching, you know, in the in the high season, 6,500 swimming lessons per week. So our impacts have really grown and that has been really nice to see. Um, but what has been really special is that now we talk about these things, these impacts in our new team member orientation. And we talk about this um, when we send out surveys to our families and we want them to complete a survey and we tell them for every survey that they fill in, we will make a donation and we will get an impact in their honor. Um, we also do it for our team member surveys. We did it for you know grand openings of locations. Anybody who attended a grand opening celebration would get a ticket. And they could put it in a little fishbowl of whichever impact they wanted to make, whether it was um, providing access to a bicycle for a child in Nepal or for school books for children in Colombia, or there were different impacts and they could put their ticket in the fishbowl where they wanted to make the impact. So um, it's been really nice because we can do this in all parts of our business and it really has helped um, 
teach our team members and teach our community and also helped us kind of model the behavior we want to see of other businesses. You know, we really, the world would be such a great place if every single business would um, do these projects and, and be able to give. And the giving can be as small as two cents for, uh, for a swimming lesson. So um, we really feel that it has helped our business because it has um, engaged our team members. It has inspired our team members. Our team members are our employees and happier team members means happier customers and happier customer, customers means healthier bottom line. And so it's a win, win, win. You know, we did not do this. Um, we didn't join B1G1 to have a healthier profit, but we definitely feel that by doing the giving and by, by engaging and inspiring our team members and engaging our community, it just it pays dividends. So um, it has been a really great um, opportunity for us all around. So, um, so you know, we really are excited that Conscious Capitalism is speaking with BUNG1 and with Masami. And, you know, I know that all of us in Conscious Capitalism want to show that business can be a force for good. And, um, you know, we feel that we can all make a difference in the world. And, and you know, we want to make them by making these impacts with B1G1. And we talk about our ripples of impact. And I think B1G1 has helped us do that. So, um, so that's our story. I hope that Masami can come back and maybe we can have a conversation about the work that we've done together. Thank you, Miren. I think Michael can come back as well. <laughs> and three, three of us can chat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, we're gonna have a short Q&A period. If anyone from the audience has any questions, um, feel free to, uh, you know what? I'm going to make it easy. I know I responded to some of you in the Q&A that I had disabled chat. It's partly due to me not feeling great as well, but I'm going to turn the chat on. Um, we're going to start uh, asking a couple questions here of our guests. Uh, chat should be on for everyone. Um, let's make it easy. Just put your questions into chat. Um, uh, so actually, Masami, Michael, can I ask yeah. a question of Masami? Um, if that's Absolutely. okay with you. Yes, so please. Masami, would you mind um, explaining, because what I really liked about when I first joined B1G1, it was that it was a membership-based organization. Mm. You pay mm. your administrative fees, and then every dollar that you put towards a project actually goes to the project on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And that was so transparent for us, and I really like that. And that was in 2016. Now, I think more organizations are doing that model. But that was pretty new back then. So would you talk a little bit about that? Like how do organizations partner with B1G1 now? Yeah. So if you think about this work, right? Like from day one and when we started in 2007, we posed the question like, are we about to start a charity or are we about to start a business? And we chose mm -hmm. a business path. And that was really like probably the early days of uh, terminology in a social enterprise. Um, and so not many people knew this, but from day one, we were very clear that we were about to create B1G1 as a social enterprise. Because um, if we were a charity organization, right, primarily, and then said, okay, please donate to us so we can do the good work then what we will be doing is almost like competing with other causes that we want to fund <laughs> and drive the fund and support to. So we decided that our model need to have a business model. And as a result of business model, when um, a company decided to make an impact, then all of the funds that they are budgeting and allocating towards the impact should go to the, the project. You know, like we don't take money off, off that. And, but in terms of sustainability, we had to think about how to drive value. So um, in the beginning, right, like when we first started, actually, we didn't have anything much, just an idea and inviting people to join in the idea. 
Um, but today, B1G1 has, uh, you know, really cool platform. The choosing the project is easy, linking those projects through API so that every business action actually can count the impact automatically through, you know, Zapier. 5,000 mm. apps can link with the B1G1 impact uh, or, you know, automate the monthly recurring impacts or impact reporting. And you can actually streamline and amalgamate and break down the impact based on the category or, you know, like so. Um, and the project updates listed on the platform. So, so, so we always think about how to make this experience valuable for the team because when companies can actually articulate why they are doing what they are doing, um, why they they choose to create impacts and what impacts actually they are creating, and uh, you know embed the widget on their website or this or then mm -hmm. um, actually businesses are pretty happy to pay subscription for the um, business part of it. But knowing that the impact fund that they are allocating is going to the causes that we are selecting. And we do the basically the assessment of all of the programs, um, charities around the world that get listed. We help them break down the impact. So that's the role of B1G1. But the, we now, you know, today we have a two arms. Like one is the social enterprise, that's the certified B Corp that manages the business program. But then we have a um, charity, um, 501c3, that manages the selection of the um, causes uh, and, you know, set the governance around the um, contribution management part. And the two organizations work together. But as an initiative, we were business at heart because we believe that the businesses really can change our world. I think yes. you actually just, you made a comment about the businesses and there's one arm that um, handles how the charity organizations are chosen. And I see that Joe Beth actually made, had a question about that because I think that's also very intriguing. Can you talk a little bit about how selective you are about the mm -hmm. organizations that you partner with? Um, so we're not like selecting organizations that are famous, right? Like, um, but we are looking for kind of like a middle level organizations that are close to the ground, um, working with communities or creating the local leadership. Um, and uh, basically the type of organizations that actually can work with the project the cost breakdown. So which means we, we if we um, get a, you know application from a charity that's trying to do something, right? And then said, if we raise this much money, we can achieve this. Um, we even though there are other ways to raise funding for that, like a Kickstarter, but um, our sweet spot is organizations that have at least like three, five years of experience and um, uh, track record, as well as a financial um, record where we could look at the audited accounts and look at the efficiency of the program, the admin mm. um, cost ratio. Um, we, we believe that the administration cost is important for every charity. So we're not expecting like, uh, you can't have admin, right? But we would set the like reasonable um, guideline. And then um, if we, it doesn't fit in the requirement, we will look at why the admin costs need to be higher for certain type of activities. And so, yeah, so there are lots to consider, which means we're not targeting to have a, too many charities joining us, but it's more like finding the right organizations and work long-term together so that their activities, that's already having their the form of sustainability, but because they have a great potential, we can drive the contributions coming from lots of small to medium-sized businesses, amalgamate that contribution, and it might not be a huge amount of money, but we know for these organizations that additional funding going toward their existing program will kind of like you know, regularly will allow them to gradually expand what they're doing. So that's kind of like a part of really like finding the connection of small, small things. Mm -hmm. So I, there's another question in the chat, actually, that's really interesting about, about how many businesses are currently participating. And then what's the total annual dollar equivalent of impacts? I don't know if you have that information off the top of your head, but at, le at least the number of businesses that are currently working yeah. with you. Yeah, so um, actually the B1J1 community, like so um, just like we choose kind of like a gr semi grassroots type of organizations to join us, we are working with um, small businesses, not like 
large corporations. So it's basically like uh, those businesses contributing a small amount regularly. And then um, over the years, we facilitated um, uh, more than like, you know, $10 million worth of um, giving resulting in 300 million impact. Um, that comes from more than 4,000 businesses um, so far. Wow, that's great. Um, something else too, I know that we were members of 1% for the planet, which mm. means that um, as a business member, you you commit to, to giving 1% of your gross annual revenues. And I know that there are conscious capitalism members that are 1% for the planet certified as well. And B1G1 also has causes that are yeah. be, that are, fall under 1% for the planet. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, let's say like businesses want to get, you know, pledge one percent of revenue or one percent of profit or whatever it is to charitable activities. Um, if they already had a favorite local charity, yeah, they could do that too. But lots of businesses are also thinking about both local and global impacts because today's world is so interconnected. So you cannot just be fixing your own local problems we are all benefiting from this global ecosystem, right? Like, so every product and services that you are benefiting from has this supply chain and the people weaved in the everyday actions. So the fact that the child around, you know, that, that you never, you might never meet, but not having the access to education, if just that 20 cents to give them access to education for one day transformed their future. Lots of businesses actually open and happy to do so, but it's difficult to know how to actually do it and also measure that. So b one Juban gives that opportunity um, because we are also officially like uh, approved the nonprofit partner of 1% for the planet initiative. Mm -hmm. If businesses want to use that 1% budget toward the global impact, then they can also um, choose the, all of the environmental projects in B1G1, which we have like more than 50 projects. And um, when they do so, they can use the receipt from B1G1 giving to actually verify that they they made this much contribution, you know, in relation to their annual revenue. Because one percent for the planet is pretty strict, right, about the very yeah. verification process. Where like a pledge one percent, you may be doing more like a, a um, uh, overall like a general giving. Um, there is no strict criteria to prove it, but at the same time, you may still want to have the tracking of um, how you are creating impact. And then if you are doing something like ESG report or CSR report or impact report, and I like impact report more than CSR report, <laughs> um, then you get to actually have a statistics of the, you know, like breakdown number of trees you planted, you know, days of water and, and so on. So it makes it more tangible for everybody involved in the business to know that their engagement in the business as team members or customers or suppliers even, uh, making a making a difference. Mm -hmm. I love um, the website is beautiful and all of the images and all of the different partnerships and all the different programs that you work with. But you also do trips. You yes. you have done trips to some of the the organizations that you work with. Do you want to? Can you give us a little bit inf information about that as well? Mm. Um, so we just came back from uh, Cambodia at the beginning of January. Um, B1J1 study tours is probably the epitome of the member experience. Um, and it's not like available for everyone because each trip we can only take a small group of people to visit and engage with the project. Um, but and, and we have all sort of other things like uh, the web events or updates, you know, from projects and so on. But the um, experience of actually visiting the project, um, often like people think that as like charity kind of like trip or something. And then you raise money from your friends and the family and go on the trip and then kind of like, oh, we built this school or you know, something like that, where B1J1 study tour is not about kind of like a donating something, but it's about here are the project program partners that we have on the ground. And we go with the mindset of being learners because when we engage with local people and understand their life and what they are doing and how they are approaching those issues, quite often we discover that the typical way of fixing a problem from our point of view doesn't apply. Like they, they don't work in those places. And we got to be continuously learning and 
tweaking how the changes are created by having everybody as the stakeholder. You know, like the beneficiaries of giving are actually not the beneficiaries. They are also givers. You know, like so um, people coming with us on these trips um, usually toward the end or even from the beginning end up feeling that they are actually the beneficiary of the impacts that they can create together. You know, like we're not just creating those impacts because we can fund it, but it's the opportunity that they provide us to know that our everyday business action and the improvement we are making, our team members' um, everyday effort or our customers' support and the purchase and appreciating our business, like every small action lead to that positive impact. And, you know, that's such a privilege that we get to have as business and to be connected with the sense of purpose bigger than ourselves and our day-to-day -day challenges. <laughs> and when we understand the, some of the enormous challenges people and children and women around the world are going through and still um, being resilient in that journey, we realize the challenges we face in our businesses, even though it's enormous and you know we could sometimes feel defeated by it, but it gives us more courage and um, connection, you know, feeling of connection. Well, there are lots of really nice comments in the chat. Um, I think that Michael is ready to wrap up, but, you know, <laughs> Michael's we'll not ready to wrap up because the <laughs> comments are live. It's great. Uh, yes, Paul, thank you great. For, for participating. And uh, yeah. yeah, I just want to acknowledge we've gotten a lot of love in the comments. Thank you, Tara. Um, Kathy, it seems like you need to connect with someone else who might live in Dallas. So yeah, very lively. Um, uh, commentary in the chat. I, I do just want to respect both of your times. I know it's very early for you uh, and late for you. Well, not late for you, Mirren. We're kind of both you and I are wrapping up our work days here on the East Coast. But um, I just want to thank you both for being here. I also want to just extend a uh, immense gratitude for everyone who joined this conversation, uh, Mirren, the work that you're doing in the world, um, your connection to our conscious capitalism movement. Um, you are uh, it's one of the reasons I was so excited about this opportunity to, to give you a, a little bit of screen time and have people who may have not met you have an opportunity to interact. And uh, Tarby, thank you. Um, I am feeling better. Um, <laughs> and Masami, uh, and again, Paul, thank you both for just, uh, you know, sharing the information uh, with our audience today. Uh, immense gratitude. So wishing you all a wonderful evening, morning, wherever you're joining us from. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, and Miren, um, you know, thank you so much for the amazing leadership you demonstrate. I remember the first time I went into your swim school and interviewing you and your team and how that kind of like really uplifted me because I thought if the world was filled with leaders like Miren, then we really can make an enormous difference. Mm. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for having us. This was great. It was great fun. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you all again. Have a great evening. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Have okay. a great day, everyone, <laughs> <Bye -bye>. all night, <laughs> wherever <Bye>. you are. <laughs> all the best. All the best.